I was a mechanical idiot who rode one of the most inappropriate bikes around the world. Within the first week of starting my ride from Singapore to Europe, I faced problems with my engine. I didn't give my scooter a thorough check before leaving. Because... Uncle, I want to take my Vespa to very far, very far to Europe. Can you help me overhaul? I always want to teach you. Your Vespa can go just fine, ma. I want to overhaul something. Maybe he couldn't understand that I was riding my Vespa scooter to Europe and not to the supermarket. Anyway, I left Singapore mechanically incompetent and with a scooter that was not prepared for the long ride. Sounds like digging my own grave. In Malaysia, my piston was scratched due to a faulty lubing system. I got the piston replaced in Malaysia. However, the scooter was not all fixed up. My plan was to visit a legendary Vespa mechanic in Bangkok. He does long tours on his Vespas too. Once I entered Thailand, the local Vespa club in Hat Jai got me up an overnight train to Bangkok with mango sticky rice as courtesy. I arrived in Bangkok in the sweltering heat of the noon. I loaded up 50 kilograms of baggage onto my scooter and went looking for the legendary mechanic. This is Mr. Mai. He specializes in Vespa repairs and has ridden Indochine with his wife, Miss Om. I told him my travel plans and my desire to learn the ins and outs of the scooter. Before leaving, I knew very little. Instead of dismissing me like my other mechanic did, he was actually very kind to show me the ropes. According to him, I'm not the worst mechanical idiot he met. Many years ago, an Italian guy rode his scooter from Rome to Bangkok. And along the way, he did not even change his gear oil because he didn't even know the existence of it. That guy was none other than the late Giorgio Bettinelli. Despite his lack of mechanical knowledge, he went on to ride 250,000 kilometers in 134 countries. His response to breakdown was, you wait, someone comes, someone helps, a car, a truck, a camel, an hour, a day, someone comes, someone helps. If you think that you cannot travel on a motorcycle because you don't have the right bike or you don't know how to fix a bike, you should check out this long list of riders. Paolo and Lindsay rode five continents, two persons on one LML Star 125. Inspired by Giorgio Bettinelli, they have no mechanical knowledge too. Sturgio and Alexandra rode across Africa and is covering South America on Vespa PX200. Drew Milne, Australia to UK Vespa PX200. Sean Jordan, around the world with Vespa PX200 too. Marcus, around the world in 80 days on different scooters. Luca Capuscheano, around the world with a 48-year-old Vespa TS125. Ilario Lavara covered five continents on different Vespas so far. Add much, Malaysia to UK and Alaska to Argentina on Honda C90. Yes, you heard that, a 90cc engine. Nathan Millward, Australia to London and North America on a 105cc Posti bike. Anita Yusof, around the world on a Yamaha FZ150i. Although these motorcycles are not designed for long distance, there are actually advantages to traveling on a small and simple motorcycle. Number one is the cost. It's gonna save you money in many aspects. The machine price, paperwork, shipping, maintenance, repair and insurance. Number two is the simplicity. It is simpler to maintain and fix. Most, if not all, mechanics can repair a single cylinder motorcycle. Even someone without mechanical background like me can understand it's working and blossom into a roadside mechanic. Number three, they are light and compact. You can easily pick it up should you fall. Oh. Oh, slippery. If you don't feel like riding, load it up a bus or train. When it comes to shipping, you'll save more because the shipping cost is usually based on volume or weight. I know Luca checked in his scooter as extra baggage on flight. Number four is the ability to blend in. It doesn't look striking in the sea of commuter motorcycles. Thus, it attracts less attention to yourself. 
corrupted officers are less likely to see you as a mobile ATM because you are on the cheap bike. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I love this. Based on my experience, the Vespa scooter has an added advantage, like its parts availability. Vespa are so common all over the world. I could tap into the context of local Vespa clubs to get spare parts and assistance. <laughs> Even in sanctioned countries like Iran, I could get spare parts for the Vespa. Next is the ample luggage space. I can load up the front, back, sides and spare petrol on the floorboard. Small bikes aren't perfect. There are known disadvantages like its slow speeds, discomfort, small fuel range, and higher maintenance interval. I believe all these can be managed unless you're rushing for time. My scooter is one that I have been riding for the past 8 years. And with my 5 foot 1 frame, I feel pretty comfortable riding it. So what is the best motorcycle for long distance travel? It is the one that you are comfortable and confident riding. It can be a $30,000 state-of-art adventure motorcycle or a $500 second-hand moped. It really depends on your needs and situation. Don't let long way down or long way round tell you that you need a big machine or celebrity status to travel the world. Don't let me tell you that big motorcycles are bad choices too. My point is, very often, we allow advertisements or society define how certain things, like motorcycle travel, should be done. We limit ourselves by believing that we need to fulfill a standard set of checklists in order to start something. I think we should unlearn some of that. Start listening to yourself. Pay attention to your unique conditions. Your checklist may be different. My late friend used to say this about motorcycle travel. It is the rider, not the bike. Oh, skidded and fell just now. Oh. So putting nylon ropes on my tires. Adventure is also about you adapting to the resources available and making the best out of it. So to people who tell me that I need a better motorcycle, I should do this, I should do that, why don't you do it for yourself? I own my adventure and circumstances, you don't. Have an adventure within your means. Define it in your own unique ways. There are people who have cycled, longboard, or even walked across the continents. What unique adventures do you have in mind or have accomplished? Do share them in the comments below, I would love to hear them. If you enjoy my videos, do give the Wandering Wasps a subscribe and a like. I'll be sharing more travel stories and insights about my two-year riding adventure. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.